Hello, good afternoon everyone. <coughs> good afternoon everyone. I welcome all of you to Grade Up channel. Hello, Swamiji. <laughs> nice to see you. How are you? So, myself, MD Laudin Ansari, and I welcome all of you to Grade Up Civil Champion. Grade Up Civil Champion. हेलो हाँ मुलाकात <coughs> अभी आएगा ना सामने रैंक अप क्लास रैंक अप का कुछ क्लास है आप लोगों का फिर हेलो विष्णु गुड आफ्टरनून अच्छा सॉइल वाला ओके ओके आई डू दैट यस टर्ड एवन लिया हैव सीन दैट यस टर्ड एवन लिया हैव सीन I'll I'll do that. No problem. So I hope all of you are doing good. You are you know preparing for the examination. So let us learn something about now today's session. Whoever will see, it's about coning of wheel and edging of slipper. And uh, I believe that those who will attend today, it will be a complete uh, you know. complete knowledge about coning of wheels and uh, edging of slippers so as you know see already for this is for gate i i am not sure whether this coning of wheel is 100% surety but yes geometric design is there and this is just very important it was asked several times in engineering services and also that is why i feel that you must know it right the coning of wheels in railway engineering so those who are here please uh, like and share please do the like and share because uh, i guarantee you you are going to like this session the most hello harish good afternoon this is small introduction about me that is a Eight years of experience, masters from IIC Bangalore, ex IIC master faculty, and area of expertise: strength of material structures, railway airport, surveying, and soil mechanics. So, those who have attended, those who are attending this session, I will just say that do like and share. Right. That is our strength, you know. Whatever the content we are delivering, whatever the content we are, uh, you know, we are bringing on live platform. That is all related to if you ask us that if you do the like and share, if you are liking these things, then we will be preparing more and more videos for you. That is all our strength. So please do the like and share. At the same time, those who want to follow me, you can go to Gridup app and you can type MD space Ansari and you can follow me there. Right. So let us start that. So first of all, we'll just see a very basic thing that is gauge, although. Although it is not at all required for the coding, but those who are here, maybe if you don't know about the gate, just a small, very one minute or maybe two minute, I'll take your time. Right? What is gauge? You know, there is a all components. This rail, sleepers. Then you have a ballast. Everything you have. So, what is gauge? Gauge is actually the distance between distance between the two rail. Which distance? Which distance? So generally, first of all, you should know we are using flat-footed rails nowadays. And if you see the flat-footed rails here, the distance distance between rails, okay, distance between rails, the inner distance between the rails. It means gauge gauge is nothing but gauge is nothing but distance between. Inner portion of the rail to the inner portion of the rail. This distance we are calling it as gauge, right? This gauge we have generally in India we have available gauges are broad gauge, meter gauge, narrow gauge, and that there, there is one more standard gauge. Standard gauge we are using in metro. These three gauges are there which uh, railway Indian railway operates: broad gauge, meter gauge, and narrow gauge. And out of all these, the broad gauge 
is having the maximum percentage maybe you can consider almost around 68 to 70 percent all the railway tracks are of broad gauge and under uni gauge policy already they are changing all the meter gauges to broad gauge so mostly they are trying to make all the gauges to a common gauge that is a broad gauge right so maybe in future you will be seeing only broad gauge and maybe the narrow gauge due to the requirement in the hilly hilly areas a narrow gauge will be there but meter gauge will become maybe obsolete or something like that so gauge means what you have to understand the distance between inner to inner one and there is one more another one you will be listening and uh, maybe you will be using it that is a dynamic gauge so this one this one the first one which i have given you that g capital g this is track gauge and mostly if anyone will say that it's a gauge you must understand that it's actually a track gauge they are or anyone if he's talking about dynamic gauge you will be learning in you know geometric design of the railway where you are using it super super elevation equation which is a very important equation that is gv square by 127r if you remember that right so for gate at least this equation is having a you know all the weightage is going to this particular equation this is one of the most precise equation which you you can you should remember it yes center to center of course vishnu absolutely correct so this one the center to center distance we are calling it as dynamic gauge i'll just g dash i will just keep it aside now this g and if i'll talk about only broad gauge the track gauge is 1.676 meter whereas the dynamic gauge is 1.75 meter always remember that and whenever you are using it in this equation that is e equals to gv equal gv square by 127r now it is for all of the students who are watching this all i'm going to conduct it for the coding of wheels but please do remember whenever you are using this equation please use the dynamic gauge dynamic gauge value here for the super elevation right so that's what i was talking about now you have almost you know broad gauge meter gauge and narrow gauge and broad gauge is the most important one which you have to remember we, you should not get forget this 1.676 and at the same time if you are using the super elevation equation you must use instead of this track gauge you must use the value of dynamic gauge here right so be careful coming to the coning of wheels you have seen there is a track and over the track wheels are running right wheels of the trains now these wheels are not flat now think about yourself think about yourself you have a track because this this understanding only will make you you know more comfortable why the coning has been done and believe me this is you are not never going to listen this kind of explanation so suppose suppose you have a track here you have a track here so instead of coning they would have made it flat isn't it they they means what the engineers the people of the railway they can make a flat track so think about the flat one forget about the coning one i will just talk about the flat one now in a track think that you have a flat normal you know the way we have the wheels on cars and on trucks i can go for the flat one right flat means this side now you will be having axle you will be having axle and you have you will be having this flat uh, you know this flat wheels now we will be analyzing it why they did it and that is the most important part if you will understand this one why they did it you will do in this way then you will understand every and you will be able to answer each and every question regarding this now you tell me what is the problem if i can i can construct this type of you know wheels no i can construct no problem at all for the indian railway also this is your axle see here this portion is your axle right and this is your wheel so wheel and this portion this portion is actually see here this is actually not flat this is in a frustum this is in a slope of 1 is to 20 hindi hindi this is i think english channel right is asking about hindi okay now this is axle and this is your wheel think about it think about it if you have a cone here if you have a cone why they did it i'll just uh, answer it why they did it now i can construct this type of wheel what is the problem now 
you will say, sir, if the train will run, if the wheel and axle will run, what will happen? Due to any jerk, due to any any kind of dynamic problems or something like that, if the whole wheel assembly, whole the wheel axle assembly will go towards left side suppose due to some jerk or due to some any dynamic action if the whole assembly will go towards uh, left side what will happen the whole assembly can derail it can come down from the railway track so what you will do so engineers thought that okay what what we we should do this is your sleepers maybe over the sleeper you have a railway track so what they did is instead of that they thought okay let us make a flange here which will restrict which will restrict the whole wheel assembly going down now you have a flange which one is there here you can see in this diagram this portion is your flange so the inner portion they have extended in such a way that it will support and simply due to any small dynamic action it will not come down now fine so they have constructed a flange flange at the end now you can understand now if it will try to go down left side or right side the flange will try to stop it okay that's good suppose now due to any jerk it is going towards left side what will happen what will happen now the flange will stop that's good no problem at all here but but there will be a huge rubbing action between the flange and the side of the rail head are you getting my point see see this portion this portion there will be huge rubbing action between between wheel flange i'll just show you there will be huge rubbing action between this you know wheel flange flange and rail rail head side of the rail head now what we must do this portion can you observe this there will be huge huge and huge rubbing action and and due to this rubbing action there will be a lot of wear and tear so now do you have any kind of opportunity to reduce this to reduce this means what if the whole wheel assembly wheel and axle assembly is going towards left side i do not have a steering on the on the you know railway engine now the loco pilot doesn't have any steering steering means he cannot make it towards right side or left side as he wants so if the whole wheel assembly axle assembly will go towards left side what will happen it will remain there it will remain there and we do not have any control we cannot ask the you know the person the operating person that okay you please make it towards slightly right side so that i can reduce the rubbing action between the flange and the head of the rail are you getting my point so this rubbing action now we cannot eliminate it will continue it will continue for a longer time period or for a longer rail length are you getting my for a longer distance so there will be a lot of wear and tear okay that's good now what they developed now this is so first of all you got the point what is the problem here after constructing this type of flat wheel what kind of problem i'm going to deal with it right now after this i will be asking you few things if you have come across till this point i will be asking few things from your side if i will give you a cylinder a cylinder now this cylinder what what is this cylinder if i will give you this cylinder and if i'll ask you to roll it down over the surface over a horizontal surface what will happen simply the cylinder will go straight agree or not if you will roll the cylinder this cylindrical equipment if you will roll the cylinder over the surface it will go straight agree instead of this cylinder if i'll give you a conical cylinder you know i'll give you a conical cylinder now if i'll give this one to you and i'll ask you to roll it down over the surface what will happen what will happen will it go straight no not at all instead it will go towards right side that's very very much uh, you know obvious and that's obvious why because why because here you have a lesser diameter here you have a lesser diameter whereas here the diameter is more if you can understand these parts i can make you understand and you will get a very nice feeling regarding this no this d1 is small d2 is large obviously if you roll this cylinder over the surface if it you will roll this cylinder over the surface what will happen due to the large diameter here and small diameter here see this large diameter portion in one rolling it will cover more distance in one roll and the small portion will cover less distance so it will go towards right side because the 
large diameter portion will cover more distance similarly similarly instead of that if i'll give you this kind of cone if i'll give you this type of cone what will happen now if i'll ask you to roll it down over the surface as here the diameter is small it will go towards left side please do understand this if you can under understand this one of course the coning of wheel is very easy so this this phenomena if you are understanding it now i will let you know how people are using this one now they thought okay there is lot of rub rubbing action here okay just a second there is lot of rubbing action here i will just let you know how they have reduced it so lot of rubbing action okay see they made it they made the wheel with some slope and you have a flange too now we will be discussing this how they have utilized it why they did it why they did it now you have an axle just give me one second and i will show you a very nice phenomena which you will like it that is for sure you will like it okay now here this tilting and all you forget about you have a rail that's all you have a rail like this you think about this rail that's all you have a rail head we'll be discussing this about the rail head also now you think about only this coney so now hmm there is a touching point here right there is a touching point you can see easily touching point now think about that train is moving straight train is moving in a straight line very straight is going this wheel axle arrangement is going straight and here the diameter diameter is same means this diameter d and the small diameter d these two diameters are same then only the whole wheel axle arrangement can go straight now we will say that there is a some jerk or some dynamic action and due to that dynamic action you think that now whole wheel axle assembly is going towards left side if it will go towards left side what will happen due to some dynamic action or due to some jerk suddenly this whole wheel wheel axle assembly is going towards left side now if it will go towards left side what we will see see here if simply it will go towards left side you can easily understand if it is going towards left side the touching point will be different here the touching point will be maybe this one this one and here in the right wheel in the right wheel the touching point will be maybe this one because of shifting the whole wheel axle assembly towards left side now you say me you tell me you tell me one thing what is the diameter here if it will go towards left side the new diameter or touching point here will be something maybe i will say d1 and here it will be maybe d2 and you can easily observe here that it the d1 is larger than d2 agree or not due to this coning or frustum shape whatever the give whatever given to the wheels now if it is shifting the wheel assembly along with the axle if it is shifting towards left side the diameter on the left wheel has increased compared to the right wheel now diameter of the left wheel has increased can you just see this one which i have explained right no just before few minutes diameter of the left wheel has increased compared to the right wheel what will be the new action of you know wheel assembly action what the wheel assembly action will do this whole wheel axle assembly will try to move towards right side agree or not see agree or not please tell me the whole wheel axle assembly will try to move towards right side why why that's what we have discussed here due to increased diameter at left side and reduced diameter at right side the left one for a one single roll the left one will try to cover more distance and for that the whole wheel axle assembly will try to move towards right side similarly if it will go towards right side due to the change of point of contact the diameter will be change and due to the change in diameter the whole wheel axle assembly will to move towards left side so this movement towards left and right side will try to make the whole wheel axle assembly wheel axle assembly at the center now i will just try to understand you know i'll just try to correct you if you are traveling in a train you will be observing that sometime if you have a jerk or some dynamic action suddenly there is a small 
division to left right left right and suddenly the whole whole train will be at center you will observe it maybe at point and crossing maybe at different different crossing if the train is moving and simply some crossing is coming you know if it has some high speed also you'll observe slightly of you know shaking of the train towards left right left right and suddenly it will be at center the whole train will be at center due to this action only right due to this action only this is one of the most you know fine spot now if if the whole wheel excel assembly can move towards left or right by itself only by itself only by making this wheel trade conical shape the whole wheel the whole train will be getting a kind of steering action steering means if it has some kind of you know jerk or deviation or maybe a dynamic action if it is going towards left side due to this thrustum or cone of the wheel it will go towards right side so it is actually acting as a steering for the rail it is actually acting as a steering for the rail where the whole rail will be at central position that is the beauty of you know coning of wheels did you get that coning of wheels on the straight track if you have any doubt please ask me if you have any doubt till this point please ask me so any any question related to this if it will be asked now you think that if it is going towards left side there will be a rubbing action of course there will be rubbing action i'm not denying that there will be a rubbing action between these two here but but it will not be there for a long time longer time period it will not be there for a longer distance it means we are reducing that wear and tear why because it will go towards left side rubbing action will start but but as long as it will start due to this first term and cone the diameter will get changed and the whole wheel excel assembly the train will move towards right side so wear and tear will be reduced here so if i will ask you due to the coning of wheels what we are doing so two most important portion you need to remember first is that first is that on especially on a straight track especially on a straight track first point is that the whole train will be at center the train will be at center train will be at center center of the railway track right second one reduction of wear and tear reduction of wear and tear so these are the two important points wear and tear wear and tear of what the flange of the wheel and rail head rail head wear and tear two most important portions you are doing two most important advantages you have right next one if you have a coning of wheels on a curve track if you have a coning of wheels on a curve track that is also very simple you can understand it now forget about the coning of wheels first of all you tell me if your whole train is moving on a curve the centrifugal force is actually acting outwards where the whole train will be trying to move towards outward side right whole train will try to move towards right side outward side now if the whole wheel axle assembly will move towards right side what will happen due to due to movement here okay before that okay let let me tell let me ask you one more thing if the rigid wheel bases are moving on a curved track on a curved track first of all one should understand that so this is this is your inner track right inner track and this is your outer track outer track now you have a rigid wheel base so outer outer wheel outer wheel has to cover a larger distance agree or not if the outer wheel has to cover a larger distance compared to the inner wheel are you getting the point because here this suppose this is a radius if i am considering then radius plus this is your gauge r plus g so both both have a different curve length both the inner and outer track have a different curve length right outer has more so the outer wheel need to cover a larger distance that is actually the requirement of the wheel requirement of the train are you getting the point what is the requirement requirement is outer on a set, uh, on a car track the outer wheel has to cover a larger distance that is good okay no problem now here if you will do the coning of wheel what kind of advantage you have in a curved track due to centrifugal action due to centrifugal force of action what will happen the whole wheel axle assembly will try to move outward side so due to slight movement towards outward side what will happen here the diameter will get changed so right side assembly if it is moving towards outward side so outer track will be having more diameter compared to the inner track are you getting 
if you have a crust uh, you know that cooling of wheels action the outer track will be having a larger diameter with the contact of rail compared to the inner wheel which will be having smaller diameter in the contact now centrifugal force is actually pushing the wheels outward side due to that action outward wheel will be having more diameter with the contact of rail inner wheel will be having less diameter with the rail of contact due to this what will happen due to this what will happen the outer will try to cover outer will cover of course now if you have a larger diameter this will cover more distance if you have smaller diameter here, it will cover less distance. So this is happening only due to your coning of wheels. So requirement was there. What was your requirement? That outer must cover the, cover the larger distance. And this is happening here due to your coning action of the wheel. So I can especially say that if you have a coning action of the wheel, the outer one is covering the larger one, larger distance and inner one is covering the smaller distance compared to the outer track. So that's actually our requirement. And so no slipping and skidding action will occur. But actually the truth is it will, it will reduce the slipping and skidding action of the wheels. It will cover, cover a lot, but it, it doesn't cover almost all, right? So that coning will not cover everything, but yes, it will reduce the slipping and skidding action of the wheels which is due to curve. Now, this is also a benefit of the coning of wheels. So, coning of wheels on the curved track is having a different benefit, different benefit. Along with that straight track have a kind of steering action where the coning of wheel will try to keep the train on the central track. But, but if you talk me for the curved track, for the curved track, here, here, the slipping and skidding action of the rigid wheel base will be reduced, will be reduced because it is meeting the requirement. It is meeting whatever you need. You need actually the, that outer must cover larger distance here. You have a larger distance here. Outer curve length. It will do to some extent. Not, not to everything. Now, next problem is that if you do that coning of wheels. Now, you understood what is their benefit in a, on a straight track. What is the benefit on a curved track. Now, next point is that if you will do that. If you will do that. I will just show you one thing here. I told you, you know there is some more you know there are few more things which you need to consider can you see that there's a point of contact i was talking about between rail and wheel if you see this point of contact this is very small point of contact now in general also if someone someone will think about it this is very small i'll just try it here maybe this is your rail and this is your wheel so coning action you have coning coning you did it now you think about this is a very small point of contact now very high stress zone will be created and due to high stress zone you know there will be huge wear and tear on the wheel as well as on the rail head that uh, that also must be reduced that also must be reduced how to do that how to do that to do that what they did instead of keeping the rail you know vertical instead of keeping the rail vertical they tilted the rail like this they tilted the rail like this that we are calling it as tilting of rail now the whole whole part will be taking the pressure uh, now if you are tilting the rail here you will be having distribution of stresses so the high stress zone so total load whatever is coming will be having more area of the coverage and the high stress zone will be not generated are you getting my point this is very simple very simple because whatever the load is coming if you have a smaller smaller and very small area very high stress will create if you have larger area, of course, the stress will get reduced. Now, if stress gets, get, will get reduced, the wear and tear also will get reduced. So, that is the benefit of tilting of rail. That is why if you are doing that 1 in 20 coning of the wheel of the, uh, you know, coning of the wheel, at the same time, we are tilting the rail also at 1 in 20. Same slope. If this is at 1 in 20, then 1 in 20, then tilting of rail also will be done at 1 in 20. Did you get that? That is what we are calling it as tilting of rail. Now, if you will not do that tilting of rail, you can imagine, see, whatever the diagram I have constructed here at the bottom, you can see, I'll just show you a few more things. Now, due to this, what will happen? This, these two rails are kept over sleeper. Due to this action, the load will be created like this and you will be having, you know, loads at both sides. Now, due to this outward load, the gauge length may get differ. It will disturb the gauge length of the gauge length is what the distance between two rails. Now, if you are uh, continuously for applying the lateral force on the rails, it will try to widen the gauge, which is also not good. At the same time, the eccentric loading, eccentric loading means what? Eccentric loadings means 
on the rail head actually your loading will be at this location which is not at all good this eccentric loading will try to make you know bending and torsion it will create which is not at all good so this will also reduce if you tilt the rail now all the load distribution will be good so that is that is how you should understand what is the benefit of tilting of rail right so this lateral direction force not at all good for the rail at the same time at the same time eccentric loading also will create trouble for the rail that is how now here if you tilt the rail you will get the benefit of it at the same time earlier we were using the wooden sleepers now they they thought that okay we will tilt the rail but what about the open wooden sleeper so what they did they have actually chopped it so simply they have cut they did the cutting of wood wood has been you know they have cleared this portion and this 1 in 20 slope has been created on the wooden sleeper that cutting of cutting of sleeper wooden sleeper they called it as edging of sleeper that is a d z i n g edging of sleepers that cutting of the wooden wooden sleeper in 1 in 20 slope that we are calling it as edging of sleepers that's all that's all from from my side coning of wheels tilting of rails and edging of sleepers that's why i told you it is very easy it is very easy right now everything i have written here if you want to write the, uh, you know this will be provided to you you can go to the so you know subscription box and uh, you can see that it will be uploaded there so this link will be given from where you can download this so everything whatever i have discussed here what is the disadvantage of not tilting the rail if you will not tilt the rail yes you have eccentric loading lateral bending high concentration of stress everything right so always remember first of all they started with what coning of wheels coning of wheels they did it then they did tilting of rail then after tilting of rail they did edging of sleepers Altogether, it is not at all necessary that every time you will you will cut the sleeper. Instead of that, you can use a canted bearing plate. Also, canted means what? This is a cant, cant no, canted bearing plate. The bearing plate with some slope. This is one in twenty slope will be given here for the bearing plate. One in twenty slope will be given. This is you know simply it will be tied to the sleeper and the rail can be kept over it. Instead of cutting the sleeper, that is also a kind of solution. So either you can cut the, you know. And nowadays the see the concrete sleepers if you see already this cant is already there that tilting portion is already there if you keep the rail here this is already tilted you should go there and see the rail railway track it is not at all vertical it is tilted whereas only the tilting is avoided in the point and crossing in point and crossing which is very weak weak uh, you know junction for the rail railway track that for in a point crossing, uh, crossing that tilting will be avoided but other than that everywhere if you see in the normal track the tilting will there tilting of the rails will be there in fact if you observe the concrete sleepers closely you can see that tilting of tilting will be there this tilting portion in a concrete sleepers you can also find actually this is very less 1 in 20 so sometimes maybe from naked eye also if you see it is not that much easy to observe but yes this is good if you will see the concrete sleepers 1 in 20 slope will be there right now few questions just will solve and we'll see how much you have learned it here Coning of wheels act as a automatic handle of train on straight track. That's statement one. Then statement two. Once the train moves left or right from the center part line of the track, the diameter of wheel in that direction increases and other decreases. It produces restoring force and train comes on the center line. Can you tell me which one is correct here? Both are correct and two is correct explanation of one. Both are correct, but two is not correct. Explanation of two only statement one is correct, only statement two is correct. Can you just tell me which one, which one option is correct? Which of the following option is correct here? Can you just write down on a comment box which of the option is correct? So if you see this coning of wheel act as an automatic handle of the train on a straight track yes it is acting 
yes it is acting at, as a automatic handle because because once if the wheel is going towards left side once if the wheel is going towards left side who is bringing to at the center if the wheel is going towards right side also who is bringing that to the center who is bringing that to the center? that is only the coning of wheels if you do the coning of wheels that is actually acting as a handle of handle although we do not have steering we do not have a steering but still this coning will act as a handle that is totally true absolutely true at the same time once the train moves left or right from the central part the diameter of wheel yeah that's true if from the center line if it is moving towards either left side or right side due to the coning action only the diameter at the both right and left wheel will get changed and due to the change in the diameter only the whole wheel axle assembly is either coming to you know is trying to come to the center every time so yes this is the correct explanation so <coughs> both are correct and two is the correct explanation of one that's one absolutely correct a is the correct one now can you tell me what about this one statement one the trade of wheels of a railway wagon are not made flat but are sloped like a conic frustum then statement two coning of wheels causes wear and tear on rails due to slipping action due to slipping action can you tell me which of the option is correct actually so here if you see the trade of the wheels of a railway wagon are not made flat but are sloped like a conic thrust up yes that's true just now we have seen this true this statement then coning of wheels causes wear and tear on rails due to slipping action that is not at all correct because in fact the coning of wheels on a curve reduces the wear and tear at the same time due to slipping action see on a curve track on a curve track actually due to the slipping due to the you know on a curve track that wear and tear due to slipping or skidding will be reduced due to coning of wheels it will not increase it will not cause the wear and tear it actually reduces so this is statement 2 is absolutely wrong this is not at all correct only the statement 1 is correct yes the option will be c right third question can you just go through which one of the following is not the reason for coning of wheels which which one of the following is not the reason for coning of wheels to reduce the wear and tear of wheel flange and rail yes this is the reason we actually did the co coning so that we can reduce we did the coning so that we can reduce see that's what we did no the coning we did it so that we can reduce the wear and tear between the rail head and and flange because this flange and rail head there will be you know rubbing action must be reduced that is what we did it that is why we did it so yes this is the actually this is not correct one this is the reason to provide the possibility of lateral movement of axle yeah to provide the yeah because see once if you i i told you if you have a flat wheels if you have a flat wheels if once once the whole wheel assembly will go towards left side no one is there to bring it towards at the center but due to the coning we can bring it to the center it means we are providing some lateral you know possibility of lateral movement that is what we are doing it so he's saying which one of the following is not the reason for coning of wheel this is the reason we, we are doing the coning so that so that lateral movement can be possible right so this is also not correct here now see to reduce the unit weight of the wheel no this is not at all reason we are not doing the coning of wheel to reduce any unit weight of the wheel that's totally wrong so this is the correct answer here for this option this is the correct answer here for this question right for this option then to prevent the wheels from slipping to some extent yes to some extent we are trying to prevent the wheels from slipping on the curve this is the reason so these a b and d are the actually they are the reason they are the reason for coning of wheels only c is not the reason for coning of wheels right so maybe you have enjoyed it and see on 30th at 7 pm on 30th on 30th december this is very important we all civil faculties are coming that is you know sawal aapke aur jawab hamare so gate civil se jude aapko kuch bhi sawal puchna hai live we will all we all you know together we as a team together we all will be there so note down this date and time all of you please join us on youtube and gridup app everywhere so we all 
together will be there kuch bhi sawal ho any any question related to gate civil you can ask us the whole team will be available there right and as you know there is a gear up batch rank up batch and vision batch is going on so vision 2022 you can join you can join vision 2022 those who are interested for the upcoming you know the next 2022 gate aim and those who are willing for the rank up and gear up also they can join where the concept building and the rank up batch is actually for the for the fast track kind of both are kind of fast track course rank up and gear up here more questions will be dealt and here more concept basic concept will be dealt and for any other query you can simply contact at this number you simply can contact at this number this vision 2022 actually ideal for second year and third year in fact fourth year also can join so meanwhile if you are in seventh semester maybe you can join it you can prepare it accordingly so do not wait and do not do the delay all all the concerned you know very experienced faculties will be taking that class or all star faculties will be taking that class these are they are you know great you know star of the grade up who got less than 100 rank in gate and engineering services right and those who are actually interested to go for you know any course or any particular requirement if you have instead of that you can go for the grade up super if you have any requirement see this super grade up super is a feature launched by grade up which is very much uh, beneficial for the student if you do the subscription based grade up super this will provide you access for all the structured live courses for that particular category and all the mock test whatever will be available in the grade, grade up so one super will be providing you both in one hand both in one hand you do not have to worry which batch i need to sit which timing will suit me where to go no nothing else you just subscribe for the grade up super for gate and whatever the batch will be there in any of the batch you can sit any of the test you can sit you will be getting opportunity enough opportunity right and these are the some nominal charges which uh, grade up is asking these are just for 3 month 12 month and 18 month and 24 month these are some nominal charges you can directly see so just go the go and see do the subscription for grade up super and these are all nominal charges if it as per your requirement you can go for either maybe 12 month or 18 month of courses thank you everyone so do not forget to uh, you know like and share button just press the like and share button and thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed and uh, you got some of knowledge here i wish all of you to uh, good luck so stay safe prep smart and go grade up thank you